Hey guys, David here with Dave T Pilot Aquaponics. Give you a little video tour of my plant growth so far. This is a new aquaponic system. Started this uh, this year. Only a couple of months old. I don't remember the exact time that I planted all these things. Um, but I can look it up and post the date on the video. So we have cucumbers planted from seed, habanero that was a transplant, some basil that was uh, a transplant that I got from the local aqua or hydroponics and aquaponics store, Green Thumb Hydroponics in North Fort Myers, Florida. He was getting rid of this basil to make room to grow some lettuce in his DWC. And the basil had fallen over and was all withered and he thought it was going to die anyway. So I said, hey, I'll take it off your hands and throw it in my gravel bed and see what happens. And my wife came out and just pruned it. Starting from the top, just kept pruning it down, pruning it down. And this basil is just awesome. We have more, more basil than we can eat. It's fantastic. So over here, I've got the cantaloupe, which I've taken vertically. I've strung it up along here on these PVC supports. And speaking of these PVC supports, uh, I found a really good way of building these. Um, I thought about it, unfortunately, after I did the top ones. The top ones, I originally I had cut the pipes and glued them in and then bent the pipe to make the hoops. But that caused a weak spot in the pipe and it bent uh, funny and didn't look very good. So I redid it because I didn't like the way it looked. And this time I said, well, I'll keep the pipe whole one piece and I'll split the connector. So I did that, I split the connector on a bandsaw and then glued it together and then I threw some tape around there to just kind of hold it while the glue dried. And I just used PVC cement. And then it dawned on me after I did it all, <laughs> because I did uh, four of them. Um, it dawned on me that if I had just used a technique that I used on other uh, things, building my aquaponic system, and just drilled out with a Forstner bit, I could get it to just slip on the pipe, like I did with these. This is actually uh, one of the original pieces that I had screwed on. I just salvaged it, took the screws out, drilled through with a Forstner bit just big enough for the pipe to fit through which is about just a tiny bit bigger than the actual hole was in the connector and it just slips through there um, depending on how straight I make the cut or the drill sometimes it's um, a nice little snug fit and other times it's loose a little looser and it's okay if it's loose because what I do is I take these clips uh, cut from three quarter inch PVC and it, it, I cut these out and then they clip listen nice and tightly on the half inch PVC and it works great I use it for all kinds of things for holding up the shade cloth and I'm using them now to hold up these strings I use two different methods for holding the strings up I thought about this afterwards it's a lot simpler than the um, nail in the string method which I don't know if you've seen that before uh, let's see if I can focus in on a hold on let's see if I can focus in on a nail See that nail right there? You just wrap the string up and around and then you kind of wrap it around the, the nail and it holds tight. It works good, it's a good method, but the clips are a little easier. So, uh, so I use these clips, I stuck a clip on there because it fits pretty tight and then this just sits on there and it's, it's plenty secure, nice, works nice. So a little trick for making these hoop houses, that's what I suggest doing, drilling out the connectors. So the basil, the, the cantaloupe, I have lots of cantaloupe, one in every bed or a group of plants in every bed, I should say. And the corn, I'm just loving the corn. Uh, I just, it, when I first started aquaponics and someone said you could grow corn, I was like, what? <laughs> never never thought it was possible, but, uh, so I threw some corn seeds in there. Literally, they look like corn kernels. Um, and I just threw them in there and said, oh, let's see what happens. And these four corn stalks grew. And I'm actually getting the ears now. There's the silk growing up the top, so. <laughs> it's awesome, I love it. Yeah, you know, I mean, you don't get a lot of corn for the, um, you know, the relative size of the plants. You get one to two ears per stalk, but hey, I think it's just cool to grow your own corn. I don't know, it's awesome. And to grow it hydroponically or aquaponically, rather, is um, even better. So onions, uh, some green onions, which are really cool because we eat a lot of those. 
And then I threw some lettuce seeds in there recently, and they're all sprouting up. I got green lettuce in here, and I threw those in all the beds too. So in this bed, number two, I've got uh, cucumbers. It's a nice cucumber growing there, which I'm probably probably gonna pick that today because that's the only uh, cucumber on this plant. Um, and uh, I want to encourage the plant to grow more. And it's like it's putting all its energy into this one cucumber. It's not that big, as you can see from the size of my hand. It's not that big, but I bet it's going to be good. So I'm going to pick that off and share it with my family. My five-year-old son loves cucumbers. And then the second cucumber plant here is a cucumber growing there. And I think this, oh, there's one right there in the very, very early stages. It grows, see, it grows just under the flower. The female flower gets pollinized by bees and then forms a cucumber. Same way as uh, the cantaloupe, which is, they're in the same family. Um, so I'll be doing that. And as you can see, I strung up the cucumbers as well. So they'll go vertical and I'll have a lot more room so that they don't, you know, scatter all over the, over the beds. Over here I have some Genovese basil. I'm not sure what that other basil was, the one over there. I need to ask the um, the owner of the hydroponic store what that what that was. He was growing that aquaponically. Um, I think I said that before, but um, so that's that is aquaponic basil, all organic, and uh, they taste vastly different, vastly different. Um, that one over there, maybe someone knows better than me. That one tastes more like like black licorice or or anise, uh, is the spice name. Um, this one here tastes uh, quite a bit different. It's got more flavor, but it, it doesn't taste like that black licorice taste. So I didn't know there was even different types of basil until I started doing this. So I'm pretty, I'm learning a little bit every day. Red cabbage is just looking awesome. I just love those, <laughs> love those leaves. That's pretty cool. My wife's like, where's the green cabbage? I can make some uh, coleslaw. So I don't know if I can catch up now, but I'll try to grow some green cabbage as well. And a bunch of lettuce in here, some red lettuce. Uh, I think that's green lettuce, and over here is red lettuce. And I'm really hoping they'll do well. Uh, I'm just dying to grow lettuce successfully. I haven't had any success yet. Every time I, I try transplanting it, it dies. So I just time I tried it directly from seed. And yeah, some of them look like they're doing really well. So we'll see. Um, again, more cantaloupes. Uh, let's see if I can see a melon. A uh, small um, melon that's just starting. Yeah, there's one. Let's go get a zoom in here. That right there. Just starting. It grows the same as the cucumber. Female seed. Or, I'm sorry, female flower. And the melon grows from that. Okay, let's go to bed number two. Oh, there's a tomato plant here. This is a indeterminate variety. So I'm hoping that'll start taking off. It's it's um, November, end of November now here in Southwest Florida. Uh, it's about 75 degrees out right now. Um, so I don't know what that tomato plant's gonna do. Um, we're gonna get we do get a couple of days of frost every year. So if that doesn't start growing soon, it might it might succumb to the frost. But one or two days of frost we'll get. Who knows? We'll see. Over here. Um, more cantaloupe. My son absolutely loves cantaloupe, so I'm just trying different methods of growing cantaloupe. The cantaloupe over there, the ones that I have vertical, I drop seeds in the bed, just drop them in and just kind of like scatter the seeds in and just put like this, just to get them down in. And oh shoot, I just messed up a bunch of lettuce. <laughs> Oops, sorry guys. Um, anyway, that's what I did with the cantaloupe seeds and they just went down in there and then boom, they grew like crazy. They're doing really well, so I got more ca I cantaloupe growing over there. Um, cantaloupe here and tomatoes. This tomato plant is a determinant type. It's a bush variety uh, tomato plant. Doing okay. I mean, it's doing really well. It's not, it didn't fruit as much as I had hoped. Um, a little disappointed. I got about uh, what, eight tomatoes on there. Um, I really was hoping for more yield. There's one stock right here that didn't grow any. It grew the flowers, uh, but no tomatoes. I don't know if that was a pollination thing. I'm, you know, I come out and I shake them, and the wind naturally blows them around and stuff. And so I don't know. A little bit of parsley in here. Um, it hasn't really done much since I planted it. It stays alive, but it doesn't really show any growth. Uh, eggplant was a transplant, and there's one little 
big plant starting right there. And then over here, we've got my DWC with more, of course, cantaloupe. And this one here is doing really well. It's a small plant that's already starting to grow fruit. There's a nice melon right there starting. Uh, as an experiment, I threw one of the uh, onions in the DWC to see how that would do. This kale is doing really well. It had aphids on it on the bottom leaves. I pulled those leaves off and I'll have to come out and check. Uh, so I have to start uh, combating aphids. Um, the very, just two bottom leaves are covered with aphids on the bottom. And um, so I picked those leaves off and threw those out. And uh, then we harvested three or four of the leaves that were actually bigger than this one here. Three or four leaves, we harvested those off. My wife made some uh, kale chips that we found out how to do on uh, just watching a t uh, Sunday morning show yesterday. And uh, they were awesome, really good. Uh, more cantaloupe, this one's nice, coming along nicely. Oh, and I have, uh, I dropped a lettuce seed in the DWC too to see how it does. And so far, looks like it's doing okay. Come over here, I got the peppers. These are red, this was a transplant from Home Depot, I think. Red sweet pepper. It's going nice. There were no peppers on the plant when I bought it. It was about, uh, oh, probably half the height. A nice pepper here, which again, um, I read that, now if you leave it, you have to leave it on there long enough to ripen into red. Um, or it can be, you can eat it now, green, and it just won't be as sweet. But if I take it off now, it'll encourage the plant to make more peppers. peppers. So I don't know if I'm gonna do that or not, I haven't decided. Uh, come over here. Here's here's one of my cantaloupes. It's coming along nice, and all the cantaloupes uh, look different. This one is almost perfectly round and has sort of a bluish color. Um, I made some hammocks out of nylons, knee-high nylons. Got at Walmart, pretty cheap. And uh, this one here is more. It's hard to see in the thing, but it's uh, it's more oblong shaped. And that color was more green. And then I've got one over here that's a good size. Uh, and that one's completely different color. It's a darker green with different markings. And it's also sort of pear, and that one's sort of pear shaped. I don't know, I didn't know Cantaloupe did that either, but again, learning more, more and more. And I got more melon starting. Nice uh, so it's going really well. Really, really happy with it. I'm just excited. So, uh, there's all my cantaloupe strung up. So I just did this yesterday, and I was kind of hoping I didn't shock the plants. They were all growing down along the ground. And it was hard to like get in here, and I couldn't figure out a good way to support the melons because it was just a mess. So I painstakingly separated all the vines and then just strung them up one at a time. And it took forever. Next time I grow cantaloupe, I'll do it as they're growing. Like the ones on the other side, I'll start, as they start getting taller, I'll start stringing them up, start training them to go up there instead of having to come down on the ground. I think that's a better way. Uh, that's what I think anyway. So while I'm here, I might as well just show you my fish, see how they're doing. Open up my top. I'll shut off my venturi here for a second so it quiets down. There's my... Uh, Tilapia and my goldfish. Doing really well. The tilapia are probably, I don't know, I got them a couple of weeks ago. Maybe three weeks ago. And they were real small. And some of them are pretty good size now. I'm really impressed. I try to feed them three times a day. Most of the time they get fed twice a day. Um, just trying to grow them as quickly as I can. The water, the temperatures have been coming down at night, so the water this morning was down around 60. So they, they weren't as ravenous as they usually are. Usually you open up the top and they're just flipping, just jump, li like literally jumping out of the water. Um, right now they're they're not showing too much aggression. I mean, they'll eat, they're swimming happily and they'll eat if I throw food in there, but they're not like, you know, going crazy at the top, like they're starving, which is how they usually act. It's pretty funny. So, anyway, that's my system, guys. Um, I've showed you the whole system on the other videos. Oh, I have my air stones in there now. I decided to put uh, air stones as my backup air supply. And um, I need to get a, uh, uh, a backup power supply. So 
So what I did is I just put the, um, the air pump underneath this Tupperware and just put a couple of brass screws in to hold it. Built that little, that little stand there. Um, the metal came from one of the IBC totes, which was, you know, I like repurposing things. So it worked out perfectly. Uh, it just screwed right on there and made a, made a bracket. And um, the actual bends, I don't know if you can't quite see them. Let me flip the top around. I used the actual bends that were in the, the pieces. These were, uh, these were support brackets like this. But they were a little bit different than this one. This one just has a single bend. This one has sort of a U-shaped bend. It's just a different type of IPC tote. And it just acted perfectly as a hook. So I just used the bend like that and I attached it to, um, this is cedar. So it'll, it'll last for quite a long time. Didn't even, didn't even bother putting a coating on it. Just left it raw cedar. Um, it'll last a long, long time. And then covered the air pump with this. It's got four hoses. It's a big air pump. I don't know. I don't remember the size, but it's a good size. Can't have too much air. So I got a lot of air coming out of that. Plus I have the air from the Venturi, so there's tons of air going into my tank. And my next project I'm working on, because I want to feed the fish three times a day on a regular basis, especially when it starts warming up again, is I'm building a automatic fish feed, an automatic fish feeder. This is obviously a Jif peanut butter jar. And inside there, there's a water bottle, and it forms like a funnel. And I just cut a hole in the bottom of the peanut butter jar, and I put the, the water bottle through that, and then I screwed the cap of the water bottle on there to hold the water bottle in there. So now it's just perfect funnel inside the, the peanut butter jar, and the peanut butter jar acts as, um, you know, obviously uh, keeps the rain out. So, and then I have a PVC pipe here, and I have another video that shows this a little bit better, so I'm not gonna go into the details right now. But the plan is, I built a, a big wheel that'll fit on this pipe, and I built it big so that, for reduction, so this doesn't spin too fast with a little electric motor that I, that I uh, got out of a broken toy, one of my son's broken cars. So I took the little electric motor out of there, and I plan on having a platform come out here and attach it with just a rubber band as a belt, and I have a timer circuit, and hopefully it'll work. Right now, it works manually. If I try it, if I put the food in there, it works. It uh, works nice, it just goes out. And there's a hole in the bottom of the pipe here, and the food just drops out. So when I get that done, I'll make a video on that. So that's all I got for now, guys. Thanks for watching. And uh, keep tuning in, and I'll update you on new things as I come up with them.